The Battle of Nectinsmere. The following time slip account took place in Scotland on January the 2nd, 1950, when 55 year old Miss E.F. Smith from the village of Leatham was attending a party in the small town of Brecon. She left the party quite late, and although the weather conditions were not the best, she still drove home. When Miss Smith was about two miles out of Brecon, she lost control of the car and ended up in a ditch. Unfortunately, she received no injuries of any kind. But unfortunately, her car could not be moved, so she had to continue her journey home on foot, which was about eight miles. In Miss Smith's recollection, the first sign that something unusual was taking place came at around 2 a.m. and about one mile from her village as she approached the crest of a slope from which Dunnecken Hill became visible. She spotted some lights in the distance, so decided to explore a bit further. As she got closer, she could see that the lights were actually a shadowy group of figures carrying flaming torches. She could clearly see that there were several men who appeared to be walking around looking at the ground. One of the men crouched down and appeared to be turning over a body. He would check out the face, and if not satisfied of what he had seen, moved on to the next body. After closely observing the unusual scene, she noticed a second group to her right. These figures were close to some farm building which could not be seen very clearly due to the darkness. It was at this time that a dog appeared next to her, who was also observing the lights, and she feared he was going to bark. Miss Smith figured she seen quite enough for the evening and quietly left the scene and made her way home and went straight to bed. The following day, and with a clearer head, she recalled the unusual experience she'd encountered, but it took another 20 years for a member of the Society of Psychical Research to meet with her to discuss the incident. A psychologist called Dr. James McHarg interviewed her in September 1971, where she was able to vividly recall her unusual adventure, where she came across as a credible witness. In hindsight, she told him that it appeared to be the aftermath of a battle scene, which had already been going on when she came upon it. She felt that the men who were walking around looking for their deceased with the intention of burying them. She was asked to describe their clothing, which she said was brownish with dark tights. Her description is very close to old carvings and other images from that period. She was also asked for further description of their torches, where she recalled that they were carrying very long torches in their left hand and the torches were very red and figured they'd be made of tar. Over the 20 years that had passed, she believed she had somehow witnessed groups of Pictish warriors of the late 7th century. It is assumed that the scene Miss Smith described concerned the aftermath of the Battle of Nectansmere. Miss Smith claims that she was aware of the battle and knew that it was fought near her home village of Leatham. However, she insisted that she had no prior knowledge of the details of the fight, its precise location, or what the Pictish warriors actually wore. But judging by the way the men were dressed, they looked like Pictish warriors from centuries past. A young girl's journey to the 1800s. The following time slip incident took place in London in 1947, barely two years after World War II, when two young girls called Betty and Daisy were exploring various bomb sites around the east end of London. Daisy was the elder of the two girls and warned Betty to be careful and not fall inside a bomb crater. Beryl was only seven years old, but remembers the day vividly. It was a cold day as they walked along dirty streets amid the rubble of bombed out buildings. The houses that had managed to survive the air raids were propped up by wooden frames. It was a very fragile, dangerous place to play. As they stared up at the buildings, all they observed were broken windows and torn curtains. After what seemed like endless walking, they eventually arrived at a street called Well Close Square. Betty remembered it as being a mixture of bombed out buildings and buildings that had somehow survived untouched, but they were empty and boarded up. However, she recalled one building that stood out from the others. 
It was a tallish building with a huge hole in the wall, where Betty compared it to a giant mouse hole. The tall structure had a back garden that was overgrown with weeds, where Betty found it somewhat enchanting. Daisy wandered off exploring and told Betty to stay where she was. But Betty had other ideas and decided to explore the overgrown garden behind the tall house. She then snuck across the weedy garden where she came upon another hole under the tall house's window. Betty could see that Daisy was preoccupied with playing and throwing rocks, so decided to continue on her own little journey. Betty could see that the hole was large enough for her to crawl through and slowly made her way, fighting off cobwebs and loose bricks, and then came upon a room. But this room was not empty. She observed the woman in old-fashioned clothes wearing a linen cap. She was standing over a large metal pot that was placed over an open fireplace. The woman was then joined by two more people. One was a woman dressed in grey clothing with a crumpled bonnet on her head. She was followed by a man wearing a green coat with ribbings on the front and wearing a round military cap. Even though Betty was very young, she could see that their clothing was very, very old, as was the furniture in the room and the wallpaper was stripy. Even though Betty could see a roaring fire blazing away in the fireplace, she could not feel any heat. As Betty decided to sneak a bit closer, she was suddenly spotted by a small boy wearing a blue calico gown, who first gave her a bemused look, waved at her, and then appeared to scream. But Betty could not hear him, and the adults took no notice of him. However, the young boy continued to point at her, so she slowly crept away and ran off. She then spotted Daisy and screamed that there were people in the empty house and pulled her towards the garden to the hole in the wall. On reaching the room, they looked around, and Daisy exclaimed, There's nothing here except bricks, rubble, and coal on the floor, and no sign of life, that there ever had been a fire burning. They returned to the building two days later, and this time, they could not even find the hole in the wall. The wall looked untouched. Betty's granddaughter, Elizabeth, has researched her aunt's experience, and judging by her description of what the people were wearing, the man with the military hat might have been going off to war or had returned. The description of his clothing was that of a British army uniform dating back to the Napoleonic War, which would have been between 1803 and 1815. Betty continues to reflect on her experience as a young child and is certain that it was not an hallucination or false memory, and was certain that it happened.